everybody. Camper Van Kevin here. And do I have a treat for you? I'm out in the middle of nowhere in Nevada. What am I doing here? Well, I'm working on videos for you. Uh, the towers, the power went down last night, and I remember this old camping site that I had that had great, great internet. It's probably about 10 minutes, 10 miles from uh, the Hoover Dam. And so as I here, spent the night working. Woke up this morning, still working on your videos. Uh, heard somebody drive up. I thought it was a buddy of mine, but the wolf pack got to barking, and uh, turns out, one of my subscribers drove by me, recognized me, and pulled over to say hello. Yeah, I don't know if you have the same problem that I have. It just seems like uh, most, most nights, and especially on weekends, when I have great signal, it just drops to nothing. But I can see the cell phone towers from here. Not many people on it. Sure enough, I had great internet. But uh, let me introduce you to this guy. Yep, everybody. This is my new friend, Jason. How you doing? He's a subscriber to the channel. And this guy right here really surprised me. He's got some very innovative ideas that he's done on his 2003 Damon Daybreak. Daybreak. And uh, I was like, Jason, man, I know you may be not ready for prime time, but I got, I got to show everybody what you did. He said, sure. So let's take a look at his rig. Got a little bit of wind this morning, but it's a 2003 Class A. It's on the Chevy Workhorse chassis. He said uh, he bought it with around 38,000 miles on it. Got a really good deal on it. Look at the shine on this thing. He said he saw my Zip video, but he used another product on here. What did you use? I think it's called Poly Glow. Poly Glow. It's kind of the same thing. It's supposed to be UV treated. So. Right. Uh, it seems to be holding up. It's been on there for a month and a half. Right? Was it hard to put on? No, same way as the Zep. Uh, they give you a, a concentrate cleaner that kind of takes the oxidation off in a brush. They just wipe it on? Yeah, and you can just see it roll right off. And then once you get it really dry, start wiping it on like the Zep. Tell me one, the name one more time. Uh, I think it's Polyglow. Polyglow. Boy, it looks good. For, looks, looks a lot better than mine. This is the same year. But we were out here talking, excuse the wind, and I saw something that kind of caught my eye. I said, Jason, what have you done? What kind of cover is that? He also put in another uh, roof vent. So yeah, it's just the RV. Uh RV refrigerator vent so the air conditioner could get more fresh air. It just pulls it right in through the top and up. So it, it pulls, say that again? It just pulls in the, the cool fresh air through the uh, refrigerator vent on the roof. Right. And then it just goes into the cabinet I built and then sucks it into the air conditioner and blows it right out the back through this uh, screened vent. Okay, um, one thing that kind of got me, and I asked you this when we were on the inside, uh, where does the water go, the condensation? Well, the water, it, it's actually tilted. You can't really tell much, but it's tilted per the instructions that the actual uh, air conditioner asked for. Uh, so when I built it, it tilts out. Okay. And then... The it comes water, out these holes? Yeah, it would just drip out of this back on these holes right here that are actually built into that cover. And he runs this uh, with a Ryobi 900-watt propane generator he said he gave two hundred dollars for this on ebay no it was on home depot it was on sale home i think it's uh, 2.99 now okay he got it at home depot but uh, now it's 300 and it's a propane generator he said he can run a 5,000 btu air conditioner off that 20 pound tank for, for about 30 hours 30 35 hours it just depends uh I haven't quite finished it yet. Once I get a door put in there in the, in the bedroom area, mm -hmm. that's the only part I plan on keeping cool because I can't, can't do the whole RV. That's, you know, right, just going to do just just where you're just where you're staying at. Yeah, just where I want to lay down and be cool at night. <laughs> and you've got a lot of other ideas. You mind us go in and yeah. let, let's show everybody what you've done? 
had no idea I'd be working on videos and then uh, then uh, make uh, another video. Wait a minute. Who is this guy? <laughs> I think everybody knows him. <laughs> yeah. You're missing something. <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm hoping to get something to put uh, there. Let's see. I, I think I can find a place to put it. Hang on. Oh. <laughs> look, 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 look. It, it, it's, it's the perfect spot. <laughs> How you like that, Eric? That's a lot better, right? <laughs> All right. Okay, we got a couple things going on. Have you ever seen this before? I've looked at a bunch of RVs. I haven't seen this. He has built a divider wall in his Class A. Insulated. Insulated. Yeah. He said, you know, that's where all the glass is. That's where all the heat comes from. That's where all the cold comes from. He said, not me. So he built him a wall there. He's got his computer desk, LCD TV. And it makes you, what well, makes you wonder why that's just not like standard. They yeah, should, that should, everybody should do that. And it's nice because you don't really have to close the curtains. Say you just want to stop somewhere, you just close the door and you're back here. And you're done. <laughs> and this thing's big enough where you don't, doesn't matter. Yeah. He's got 100 watts of solar on top. Now look at this idea. I've got a problem with shoes in my RV. And there's just one of me. There's two people that live in this RV. He said he got this at Home Depot. The 36 inch, he didn't have to cut it. He just put it up and he puts his shoes up there. Another thing, I kind of I hope I'm not going too fast here, is he got, uh oh, he got this thermostat controlled propane heater off of eBay for $80. He said it works great. And, you know, I'd use a little buddy heater, big buddy heater, it has no thermostat in this misery. $80 eBay, we can't find a name on it. Yeah, but it was a while ago, he says but uh and he says it works great and heats this thing was this 34 foot this is well it says 2750 i believe it's probably around 29 28 and a half somewhere in there all right and he has fans that he's running off his 12 volt light right here that's pushing forward and backwards and these are for uh, transfer trucks i no, just regular like i think you could find it at a RV, or a truck stop or anything i got that on amazon i believe for 16 bucks or something. 16 dollars mitchell yeah. well take a look at that and they're filthy i have to, I have to clean them That's yeah I'm yeah sure. well yeah you, you had zero notice of me coming in your <laughs> rv it's awful clean let's go back and, and see what you've built here to house this air conditioner because it's pretty darn impressive jason before before we begin i want to i want to thank you for for letting us see this yeah. uh you know everybody all of us putting our heads together being innovative we're gonna we're gonna get to where we can beat air conditioning yeah. once air conditioning is beat where we can do it cheaply uh us nomads are gonna be able to stay in places a lot longer yeah. Yeah. but uh look at the construction of this box that he has done looks looks like his factory and this is a 5000 btu 6000 6, 6, yeah. okay um and I was like, Jason, I was like, why didn't you go with a digital energy efficient uh, air conditioner? It would, it would be a lot more, well, would be a lot more energy efficient. And he said that with a generator, it was kicking it on and off the digital. So he had to go in here with the analog so it wouldn't mess with the controls of the air conditioner. Yeah, it's just too much when the compressor would start up, it would shut off the whole digital section and just reset it, it, because it just pulled too much power for it. I, I ran mine uh, in my bug out, well, in my enclosed trailer, I had a 5,000 that was uh, energy efficient, mm -hmm. and I ran it with a 2,000 watt Honda. Yeah. You're running this with less than 1,000 yeah. watts. Well, that's, that's 700 running watts on that uh, generator. So. so this is a lot more efficient than the 15,000 BTU up there on the top. Oh, yeah. Of course, he still has to build a door here. Yeah, I'm going to put a door here just to keep the, the bedroom because mm -hmm. this isn't going to keep the whole RV cool, you know. Right. I'm looking to keep at least to have the relaxed, you know, cool bedroom where I can come in and sleep at night or mm -hmm. even just hang out in here. Eventually, I want to put a little TV in here so I can just relax when it's 100 and 
10 something degrees outside. outside here in the desert. But, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, this is it doesn't work for every situation. It mm -hmm. just helps. Yes. Yeah. When it gets too hot outside, you have to jump up to the 15,000. Yeah. And I have a regular uh, RV generator. I get started up to run that big one. but right. Or plug, or plug in. in but yeah. uh, it's just, they're just not that efficient. They work great, but boy, a, a gallon to two gallons an hour mm -hmm. for, for gas. Yeah. Yeah. Versus... You can fill up a 20 pound cylinder now for what, $12? 12 to 15 bucks, yeah. Depending on where you're at. Yeah, depending on where you are. So, so tell me a little bit about this box and how it's made. Well, the box is just me measuring. Mm -hmm. And I happen to be lucky and I work in a carpenter shop. So mm -hmm. it's just all table saw and then just, and you can see here on the bottom how it's tilted. So yeah. if you look, it goes. Uh -huh. you know, down like see this to, to make sure your water runs out and I just built it to, to the specs of this air conditioner which I come to find out almost all air conditioners are this close to this 12 by uh, 16 inches so it, it almost worked with anything and the good thing is this air conditioner goes out 140 bucks or even Cheap. 120 bucks. When it, when it breaks you just throw it away yeah you stick a new one in there what was the company that you got this outside great cover for do you remember well the company it's an I just looked around on the internet, so I found RVs that already had this, that were selling new, and I believe it was Travel Light, and I called them, and I said, hey, look, that little grate on the outside of that, uh, your travel trailers, how, where can I get that? And he goes, well, I can sell it to you. Now, I think I, I paid, with shipping, about 50 bucks for that little thing, mm -hmm. but that's what makes it look you know, it looks looks factory. Factory. Yeah. It looks good. I didn't want to have this whole air conditioner sticking out on the side of the RV. One question I keep thinking of is, how does it support the weight? This right here? Yes. Okay, well, when I put this up on the inside, you can't see it. Of course. There's. I ran two pieces of the plywood across the top and the bottom. Well, from here down, this is all aluminum from the aluminum framing. Oh, okay. So this, I, this, this, whole, this whole RV is aluminum? Aluminum framed, yeah. Okay. And... Uh, I just took self tappers mm -hmm. and just right into that aluminum frame and that thing, it, it's yeah. not going anywhere. And you, you, you <laughs> measured those screws before you. Yes, I didn't make sure. <laughs> I didn't want them going right all the way through. The side, yeah. Because that wouldn't look so fat. No, no, no. Wow, this is, this is innovative stuff here and I have not seen it. And you know, guys, I've toured a bunch of RVs. So he's got the, the air conditioner here. He's got the wall. Uh, he's he's uh, $80 for his heat. This guy's on his game. Got the fans up there. And I just, uh, he come to meet me. He had no idea he's going to get a, his <laughs> RV toured as well. I didn't care. Hey, I got to meet Camper Van Cowen, so I, this is nice. He comes and, through here and... and Tucker almost beat him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's a ground, but he's, I can tell he's a sweetheart. They, they, they do a good job. They're good doorbells. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Let's, let's take care of this uh, sticker thing over here. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, for those that are new to the channel and hadn't seen any of my videos where uh, I talk about these, I sell these on my channel. This is how I keep gas in the gas tank. I'm going to give Jason one today for letting us see the inside of his rig. Uh, now, you know, uh, once you put this on, um, your, your rig loses half its value, <laughs> just like maybe not on the inside, but if you put one on the outside, it's just like instant, you lose half its value. Yeah. Now I'm not going to tell you where to put this. Okay. Um, yeah, I have, I have a, <laughs> I have suggestions where it could go, but, uh, yeah, uh yeah, that's, that, that's second choice, but first or second pick, I'll let you decide where. Well, I can't get rid of Eric's, you know. <laughs> But I uh, just can't thank you enough for showing us all this oh, and yeah. a lot of innovative ideas. Get this started here. All right. There we go. All right, all right. I <laughs> like it. And he's not putting any stickers on the outside of his RV yet. So we're going to put this right here. I think he said he's going to, he's got another place that he's going to find for it on the inside. But if you want a Camper Van Kevin sticker, down in the description below, these are $6 and these are $5. So if you'd like to support the channel, 
sure helped me out a bunch and keep some gasoline in the tank and my travels going. Okay, everybody. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. Jason has some very innovative ideas. We're lucky that he took the time and let us, uh, well, we're lucky he shared them with us. All right, I'm gonna end the little video right here. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. Hey, we'll see you again soon. You guys take care. Bye-bye.